grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus the Christ. I'm Reverend Helen Ballou, and on behalf of myself and Reverend Dr. Catherine Woodrow, it is a special joy to welcome you to worship on this beautiful Easter morning. Happy Easter to everyone here, and good morning. Um, I am making an announcement on behalf of SPRC and the music program here at DUMC to honor Miss Amy Vanek. Where is Miss Amy in the back of the church? There she's waving her hand. Amy is moving on from her role here at DUMC after today's service, and we are just so grateful for all of her gifts and her joy and her leadership to the music program. Now I invite you to stand in body or heart and join me in the greeting. Do not stand at the tomb and weep. Today is a day of joy. Do not let your hearts be in mourning. Today is a day of joy. Run to tell others the great good news. Believe the good news that Christ is risen.
and living God, like a tomb's darkness that gives way to light, open us this day to newness of life. Open us to your love, your acceptance, your forgiveness, and your peace. Open us to one another and to the possibilities you have in store for us. Give us hope for the future and a passion for life here and now. We pray in the name of the one who destroyed death, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated. Please join me for the prayer for illumination. Come, Holy Spirit, to awaken our ears and hearts to the lessons of the day, that as the Easter announcement is heard in this place, we may be transported to the gates of heaven where we will live eternally. Amen. The New Testament lesson this morning comes from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, every, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgivenesses of sins through his name. This is the word of God for the people of God.
The epistle lesson this morning comes from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. So, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. This is the word of the God for the people of God.
the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he might rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of our Lord. I have seen the Lord. That's what John's gospel reports to us that Mary Magdalene said to the disciples on that first Easter morning. And it's an affirmation of overwhelming joy on Mary's part. But things did not start out quite so joyfully when Mary first arrived at the tomb that morning. Now remember that she had been there at the cross when Jesus was crucified on Friday. She had seen him nearly beaten to death, and he had been forced to carry his cross to Golgotha, the place where he would be crucified. Simon of Cyrene, a man from the country who had come to the city for Passover, was forced to carry the cross the rest of the way when Jesus could no longer carry the 75 to 100 pound load. And after Christ died between two criminals, Mary would have seen his body taken down from the cross. Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate if he could take Jesus' body. Joseph took it, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a new tomb that he himself owned. Well, while it was still dark on that Sunday morning, Mary made her way to the tomb, most likely to continue to grieve the loss of someone that she so dearly loved. Well, when she arrives, she's shocked. The stone has been rolled away. She wonders, what what has happened? She runs at top speed to where Peter and the other disciples are, the one whom Jesus loved. I always think that's so odd that he's called the one whom Jesus loved. If Jesus loved him so much and everybody knew it, why can't we know his name? So anyway, she tells them they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. 
Well, Peter and this other unnamed disciple get in a foot race, running top speed back to the tomb with Mary running along behind to get back there to find out what has happened. Mary is right. The tomb is empty. Empty of Jesus' body because all that is left lying there are the linen cloths that he had been wrapped in. The cloths that had been around his body and also very neatly folded the cloth that had been around his head. Well, that lets them know this had not been some type of grave robbery. Robbers would not have taken the time to neatly fold things up and set them there. How odd. Something else is going on. If it were robbery, these expensive linens would have been taken as well. Well, John's Gospel tells us that Peter and the other disciple see the tomb is empty of Jesus' body, the linens are still lying there, and that the other disciple saw and believed. But that doesn't say what he believed. And I can't imagine that he saw and believed that Jesus had been raised from the dead. If he believed something that extraordinary, as wonderful as this, that indeed the resurrection had happened, why would he and Peter just suddenly return to their homes as if nothing that amazing had happened? Perhaps indeed they saw and believed that the body was gone, as Mary had said. They head home still weary and grief-stricken, leaving Mary Magdalene alone at the tomb once again, weeping, her heart broken with grief and loss. Wasn't it bad enough that the religious and civil authorities had done this to Jesus? Wasn't it bad enough that some of his closest disciples and followers had betrayed him, had left him at the last minute, had even, like Peter himself, denied him. I imagine her thinking, can't they just leave him alone now that he is dead? Well, I'm sure none of what is continuing to happen is making much sense to Jesus' followers. The men have wandered back home. Mary is still there, alone at the tomb, to dwell in her grief and loss. But it's a good thing that Mary decided to stay near the tomb. The rest of the story from here on out is all hers. Because by staying there at the tomb, she is the one who saw the angels. And the angels ask her, woman, why are you weeping? Well, she tells them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And then she must have sensed that something or someone was behind her. For after saying this, she turns and she sees a man that she thinks is the gardener. She does not recognize him until he says her name, Mary. And then she knows indeed this is Jesus returned resurrected from the dead as he had promised. Indeed, the promised resurrection had occurred until Jesus spoke her name. She could not see, she did not know who was there. Well, Jesus tells her, go, tell the other disciples the good news. And she rushes off breathless, running for joy, this time back to tell the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Can you imagine how different this time things were when she ran back to say, I have seen the Lord. Well, Barbara Brown Taylor, author, pastor, and teacher writes, 
Any way you look at it, this is a mighty fragile beginning for a religion that has lasted 2,000 years now. And yet that's where so many of us continue to focus our energy. On the tomb that morning, on what did or didn't happen there, and how to explain it to anyone who does not happen to believe it too. Resurrection doesn't square with anything else we know about physical human life on earth. No one has ever seen it happen, which is why it helps me to remember that no one saw it on Easter morning either. And then she goes on to say, the resurrection is the one and only event in Jesus's life that was entirely between him and God. There were no witnesses whatsoever. No one on earth can say what happened inside the tomb because no one was there. They all arrived after the fact. Two of them saw clothes. One of them saw angels. Most of them saw nothing because they were still in bed that morning. But as it turned out, that did not matter because the empty tomb wasn't the point. And that's the good news in many ways. The empty tomb was kind of like a cocoon. And the butterfly is one of the ancient symbols of the resurrection. The living being that had been once entombed, kind of like the butterfly in its cocoon, was outside. Now, Christ did not stay entombed to receive visitors as if they would come to call and see him sitting up there, you know, feeling fine. Christ was out and among the living. He left the tomb and he went out back into the world to see those whom he loved. John reports at least four different times when he appeared after the resurrection. They're, those are wonderful stories. Read, read the end, a couple of chapters of John's gospel, and they are just wonderful, earthy stories about how Jesus decided to appear to his friends and followers after the resurrection. No, we'll never know for sure what happened exactly in that tomb or how resurrection works. That remains between God and Jesus a mystery to us. And we're not so much witnesses to the resurrection, but witnesses to the resurrected one. That's the important part. Like Mary, Easter begins for us when we hear Christ call our names. That's the essential part. Easter becomes real for us in our hearts and our lives. When like the disciples, we realize that Christ is in our midst. Christ is here today. Christ is risen. That's what we proclaim all day Easter day and hopefully beyond. Christ is in our midst and calls us to be his followers here and now and each day. I have seen the Lord, Mary says, in joy. May that be our affirmation today and tomorrow and each day to come. Amen.
friends in Christ, let us pray. Jesus, human one, holy one, on this Easter morning, we see you and shout hallelujah. You are the healer of our hearts, the teacher of our minds, the shepherd of our souls, the source of our lives. You are the gardener of God's good creation. Thank you for seeing us and welcoming us for all that we are. Thank you for bringing the world to new life in you. Thank you for making the promise of God's life-changing love for all people real. Risen Lord, because you live, we pray in hope for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Messiah, because you live, we pray in love for neighbors who struggle to access the food, housing, health care, education, and employment that is needed not just to survive, but to thrive. Prince of Peace, because you live, we pray in faith for people, communities, and nations in need of reconciliation. Son of God, because you live, we pray with confidence for the people, leaders, and mission of your whole church in the world. Christ Jesus, because you live, we can pray, live, and serve every day with joy and thanksgiving as new creations in you. Savior of the world, thank you for reaching through the fears, sadness, and despair of a world in need to change us for God's good. Help us to see you and follow you into new places, new relationships, new lives together with our neighbors. As heaven and nature sing of your glory, help us to take part in your song of compassion and justice, mercy and grace, hope and healing for all people. We join our voices with the communion of saints across time and place as we pray in the way that you have taught us to do. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
enjoy to love and serve God in all that you do. Let us bless the Lord. May the God of peace who raised to life the great shepherd of the sheep make us ready to do his will in every good thing. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory and honor forever and ever. Alleluia. Amen.